which is, you know, it's a fair statement to make when you're sort of sitting at the top. But I'm curious to see how they try and challenge in and amongst the region to push the region to stronger heights. That is it, right? And, and Milos at the pre-desk um, actually alluded to the strong um, national scene we have. Of course, we have uh, nine nationals that feed directly into Challenger League. And then we have a bunch of others uh, also being set up, of course, that really help harnessing, uh, help really helps to harness our talent. Just unfortunate. Ever since uh, the national started feeding into CL, we haven't been able to do well at SI anymore. I don't, I don't want to say there's coincidence, because there's not. Uh, it's just unfortunate timing. Either way, bans are underway. We do, uh, we do see two of the SAS operators to be banned, the Sledge and the uh, Thatcher. Meaning that the Flores that BDS was so proficient with will stay up. Valkyrie will also be removed. Pretty default ban on the map like Gunslot. Just to stop the runouts from yeah, happening. Yeah, 100%. As much as it would. And the Yeruni to close it off. So, yeah, that, it isn't your... Again, it makes sense. Yes, it, it does. But like the sledge is not really a band that you do see all the time. But I do understand it with the grenades it brings, the self-destruction that it has. Yep. It might be good to remove that from the hands of either of these teams. I think also what we're sort of looking towards as well is, as you said, the floor is, is still on the board. BDS, again, if we're going to quote them, was, you know, they said they believe it's one of the strongest operators at the minute in terms of what they can sort of bring. It's so adaptable. It's malleable. It can be the open on rotations if they need it to be. It can be that pressure. And... You know, for them, it's something where they've kind of let in, especially on Cafe, as they said, that it's the one that they feel very confident with. Here, there's a lady that isn't seen so much nowadays. Is Ash. 66% drop-off. Yeah. Comparison to last season over the first week of play across the major regions. Now, Lems will decide to uh, to bring it that Ash indeed, and it is still a very, very good operator. You still have the, the breaching grounds. You still have the breaching charges available to you, which would really help in opening up these floors. And as BDS has banned Sledge themselves, this might be a little bit of the ID themselves. Not a lot of the teams are playing Ash anymore, so maybe with this, they're forcing Vitality into a bit of discomfort on their attacks later on, whilst having a good alternative themselves in the terms of that Ash. And LMs will be playing that operator right now. Of course, we have seen uh, his uh, capabilities as a fraggler as well, even though that's not usually the role that he does fill. Well, I think that's entirely it, as you're looking at Shaiko, who's obviously picked up the mantle of Iana. You've seen a lot of big Ash players yeah. pick up Iana as a sort of response to it. There's still some mobility and utility that Ash can bring. Obviously, if you're looking at sort of structures where you can't quite get round to them, you're looking at consulate, you're looking at windows where most of the fighting and the setup happens. Mm. Ash is fantastic here. But so is Sophia in a lot of other spots where Ash is otherwise a big play and a big part of that. So, you know, it's it's almost one of those things here where you'll say to club, you'll bring at least two hard destructions. Um, here, you sort of bring both the ranged off destruction because you sort of need it with the potential to burn through usually windows, but rune has gone. Oh, the stack up. There it is. There's the pings. And goodbye, Malusi. I'm mean, will just be rotating up right now, of course. No one inside yet, but they do have a good point on his uh, location. His cactus now gets the kill down onto Alems. That is the entry. It is the Ash going to be removed from the board, so no six breaches will be used. And as one of the ADSs temporarily gets disabled, Rise will just quickly put down a new one, just to make sure that his position stays well, fortified for just a little bit longer. Because with losing the Ash, you also lose three projectiles you can use to try and waste the ADS. And as they do want to use these grenades, it's before the goes for the jump out, but goes down due to an air jab. The grenade that got dropped by Shaiko post-mortem managed to pick up that kill, and somehow he still trades himself with the help of the air jab that Rafal has put down. And with that, we stay into a one-man advantage for Vitality rather than the two that they were looking to gain. Yeah, it puts them in a bit of a tricky situation. I'm going to talk, obviously, previously about how good that utility can be, and now you've lost two of it. You've lost your entry fight. You've lost the sort of opening engagement. You're swinging around in a great take from Ranchiro. Obviously, had the drone pumping the information afterwards, but it in no way makes that fight easy when you could see Shinka was sort of just shugging off the drone and shrugging it off and saying, I can still take this fight. And, you know, it's, it's that quick motion. It's that quick reflexes, which put them in the situation. The body balance is 
back and balanced, but there's a lot of structure that they have in place. They've set themselves up, but you can see that BDS, they can't quite find their way to force themselves through that structure. They're having to reconvene, having to restructure, and with 50 seconds, they've got to try and start that sooner rather than later. There's not much time left, indeed, to try and get into that site. It is a quite even number here with three on three. They just need to find the entry, and with Rise active on the yellow stairs, it's going to be very difficult to try and dig in. You need to go and get that kill, and they're trying to make that happen right now. Concussions will be shut up. They're trying to go for the double team here. But the question is, are they going to be able to get these skills, or will we see a double team ourselves on the other side of the yellow stairs right here? And Shiro peeks in, will be able to be picked up by Rise, who now realizes there's a second player as well. Doesn't get that kill quite yet, though. Yeah, he was so close. He's going with a pistol and finally finds the lock off. There it is, is the knife. He expected the swing to come from the windows at the same time. They didn't, but because of the positioning on the Nomad, because they couldn't quite get the revenge fight, it just leaves Bride on a window. He swings at the end to see if he can have any impact, but unfortunately, too little, too late. And it was a very good opener here from Vitality. They were able to pull enough out of the approach of uh, BDS, and they did it, as I said, structurally. They found now BDS in this tricky situation where they didn't have what they needed to burn themselves through the situations. They were obviously, you know, they'd lost two of their grenades. They put themselves in this tricky situation of, okay, how do we take this fight on the top of yellow now? We can't do it yeah. in our traditional manner. So we've got to just try and shove ourselves up the stairs and see if we can take it that way, which obviously, unfortunately, didn't work out for them. And we all saw how that worked out. Not really well. Now the floors will be brought back by BDS and... Operator, we have seen them use so perfectly well on Cafe against Empire. Really an operator that can help with these evil eyes that sometimes get deployed in difficult spaces. Of course, we are playing on that first floor. That makes it a bit easier to use as well, as, of course, there is limited access from the outside on that top floor, especially not if you want to deploy a uh, RCE, because you need to be standing. You cannot be on the rappel if you want to do that. So, with that, not really a viable option for the top floor. As we are going to that first floor, of course, you can just simply sit in front of the front door, deploy the RCE, and get it in the position where it's necessary. Of course, hold on to them just a little bit longer until the push starts to clear up on where it should be coming from based on the picks and entries that are gotten by the team. So, action phase underway. We see a similar setup compared to what we saw the previous round. We see very heavy top floor control. The yellow stairs are again being contested by Vitality. And that means that BDS have a important decision to make. Are we going to be going for the top floor clear or are we going to be completely ignoring that, trying to find a safe spot where no vertical is going to be threatening us and trying to push on from there? Okay, now it's the change of pace. As we said, there was a sort of misbalance or an imbalance in how they were trying to force bodies out. And here's the first example of how they can change it. Okay, there's no the stack of ADSs here for Rise to juggle between, as he did before. And he had to keep this corner quite staunchly. But it's still a test of can BDS utilize what's in their pockets before Vitality find a way to strike and remove it. Bibu, he's creeping and looking for a bit of aggression here on the top, hoping someone drifts a little bit too wide and close to the fire as they double down and dance around Rise on the top RCN. floor. Oh, oh no, Renshiro gets got. There it is. The remote controlled car is taken as well. And yet again, a great strike from Vitality. Very good frag coming in right there. And as the flashbangs are being tossed in, you see Rise falling back because grenades are being tossed in by Shaiko at the same time as well. Just one left. Coming right around the corner of the uh, bathroom here, and Rise now knows. All right, that's the grenade gone. I can safely play her again because there's literally no other piece of utility they can play. Spots the head of the floor S and now also knows that, all right, there is a player still on side and might be sending in one of these RCEs. And again, a second one will be taken care of. So now it's up to a lambs. Am I going to be using a third drone to try and displace Rise from this power position? Now, I said it, I didn't think all ADSs were there. Maybe at least one, but they've really, truly stacked themselves on the top of yellow. They're making sure that they don't lose it, which, fair enough. You know, you don't always see this sort of heavy bout and burst of utility. It puts himself in this entirely isolated no man's land situation. But yet again, BDS have found themselves a little bit cut off by that, even when they had everything in their pockets. Okay, Ranshiro went a bit early, and Alems is finally able to find something somewhere else. But with P4 gone, that still leaves Rise in that very important integral corner hold situation at the top of that staircase they have still entirely got control. The slow creep up Shaiko around the back stairs. Visa is able to offer them a little bit more, but with the swing in suffering, it's a bit of a trade of bodies. They get rid of Rise and finally find Shinker and top is theirs. 30 seconds in a three versus two. They've got to see if they can try and capitalize their way down into the side.
side. There's the body on the back of Spiral. Bibu is rotating up and down. Oh, and the drone. Yeah, up seems like the taste of it, though. Should have been aware from the drone earlier that he was playing around Spiral, but it doesn't seem like they're well aware. Now, Bibu just holding on here, doesn't spot the drop in the first second, and Shaika will be able to pick up that kill. However, drops down all the way to the basement, and as Bree Day now goes down for the plant, it's all up to Cactus. Is it going to be able to cancel it, or is it going to stay put? Looking at the wall right here. Looks like it. I assume a disconnect or something. <laughs> I assume as well. Uh... You, yeah, you assume that something, there it is. Yeah, he's gone. Um, okay, I mean, that's just unfortunate, really. That's one of those things where you only really <laughs> learn that something's happened at the very end. We even had Cactus's camera there for a second, but unfortunately, that was a disconnect. So, it's tough. They were in a, you know, a one body less situation, but at the same time, BDS, they had that adaptation. They were able to sort yeah. of... They went, well, we're not burning through utility, so let's just try and take it as a firefight. There was a swing in at the same time as the slow approach on the opposite side, and then the swing in from the other windows. It was that coordination that was at least able to get them in, and then they were able to True. win the next firefight. But getting in is often the most important and the tough spot. Hey! <laughs> the palm tree. We get a palm tree cam now. How do we put uh, Tim's face on it? That's the big question. I'm sure if you now ask, someone will be photoshopping it and I sending love it your it. way. Big Tim, big Tim tree. Um, either way, getting into consulate, getting in in the situation is sometimes the toughest part of yeah. a consulate approach. It definitely is, and it is due to the fact that, especially on the top floor, there is basically just one balcony you can attack from, and it is very exposed. It is not a safe space at all. Like there, there's basically one angle that you can go at. It's at the double window and you're exposed from many different angles yourselves. So what we do often see is, is either a scuffle for admin, where some teams defend it better than others, say, let's say Fatality defends it quite well, uh, or you go for a take onto the yellow stairs and then the actual office. And that is probably the reason why BDS is choosing to go for that approach, due to the fact that they have seen Vitality defend on the administration office. It's not fun to play against, let's put it up like that, because your heads will be taken clean off by P4, for example. Um, but yeah, lots of windows. It encourages repel plays. What we do often see is a drone driving around, getting a spot on, and instantly we do see the crossfire coming in from one of these windows, which sometimes are closed, sometimes they're not. But that's often the name of the game, and especially on that top floor where there is limited access. Now, of course, if you go to the first floor, you still have like you know a lot of windows you can jump in from. You have the main lobby door, and on the basement you have the garage wall uh, that make it a little bit easier to attack. But Talk about that. We are going to garage. Let's see. Let's see if they can sort of stick themselves in down on that basement. Obviously, curious to see them at sort of full strength. Now we we don't know how long Cactus was unable to sort of reciprocate any of the aggression that was being put against him. Three C4s in pocket. A fairly sort of standard setup and collection. They've got the Mozzie and the Mute to. I'm assuming people in Rise are going to play around with Intel off-site. The... Uh, Jaeger's gone for the first time. No ADSs to try and burn out the situation. Which, to be fair, on this site, you don't really have to because, like, it's always good to have some of those solid holds, but the hold here isn't as close to the punch where you would have that sort of backline setup that's sort of the core of a hold. Yeah. Uh, as, as yellow stairs can be in other places, is this kitchen area, is that backline you would expect. If they're able to strong arm some nades that deep. Either way, then you're probably encountering some other problems. Just checking, we do not see the uh, florist coming out. Now we see the buck to be brought out. And I was thinking with the amount of evil eyes, you know, there's two on the board. Uh, and, and they're often quite difficult to deal with because normally the play here for the garage take is, is to go for the plan behind the white fan or behind the black car, depending on how much control you really have. And very often. Uh, it is going to be the evil eyes that try and chip away some of your HP whilst you do that. Might be even going to go for that down and Spree Day spots them out right here. There's not really anything they can do to deal with it rather than getting grenade zero in or the impacts later on from Rinchiro. So I'm not sure if there is a, uh, a little mistake made here by BDS or if they have a completely different plan. Because they could also just go for the first floor and top floor control and then start making down these angles. Start bucking up the floor. 
We can see a drone working its way over towards the admin and the vending machine side as well. They're just steadily clearing the top and cutting off the immediate firefight. They're not going to intently throw themselves towards the opposite side of Visa Stairs or of Admin. They're sort of going to say, okay, well, we've got ourselves this bubble, this pocket, and we can start trying to put pressure on to rise and piano above. It's a big story attack, and this gives them that bit of mobility for the buck to, as you said, start digging their way from the top down. And push them into more uncomfortable situations. You're kind of saying, okay, well, you oh. can have this pull-up, which is what's being explored now, and that'll be the call to say, look out, man, they're coming. There's a great opener, and a C4 is missed and blown, but they just slip out of there. They realize that they've got more intel than they want. It's not getting up the stairs that's the difficulty, but it's getting across what is a very long, dangerous firefight. It definitely is, and as the Gemini quickly ran in the garage right there to have a bit of uh, a bit of information to go with, and as Cactus now goes down due to Shaiko, that is going to be the evil eyes neutralized. They will only be giving away some of the information right now. Shaiko trying to go for the second one, as I believe that is B4. No, actually, Rice trying to go and pick up some kills, but Rafal quickly swings in from the yellow stairs, and with 50 seconds left, it's suddenly a three on five situation in favor of BDS. Well, P4 at least battles back, drops Breed A 40 seconds. Now they've got to see if they can find their way down to the site, but the executes haven't always been the worst thing. The diffuser is in a position where it can be picked up and quickly replaced onto the side itself, but it's Bibu that gets cut down next by Shaiko. The quick swing round and the approach. Now as they try and just tip of the spear their way through, P4 dropped from deep, leaving just one body behind the white van, trying their best to creep their way forward. The smoke canister buys them some time, but unfortunately gives a bit of the game away. The spray around the back is Rafal, who ends up actually locking it off from the front, and BDS were able to take the ground that they needed and make it work work for them. Yeah, this is why you don't need the Flores in that case. You, you have the, the Buck playing all the way from the top floor. First of all, creating a lot of vertical angles into Piano, which basically forces the player that was playing there to fall back. It's not really an option anymore. You will be exposed from the top if you try and take gunfights and thus rotates into anti-chamber. Later, of course, came back through benches, trying to go for a flank, which was picked up by Rafael quickly. But the way that they did it, they got piano control quite quickly. After that, they took care of the uh, of the Maestro player himself. And since, um, you know, the gameplay after death isn't in yet for Yokai drones or Evil Eyes, as that is uh, still being tested, that means that the evil eyes are basically only bulletproof cameras at that point that will be giving away a little bit of information, but nothing more than that. And that is a very valuable pick on a map by Consulate when you want to go for that garage take for the garage push. And Cactus now needs to make sure he doesn't die as the first man again, because that would really hurt them in their setup, really hurt them in the late round potential that they have to offer. As of course, besides that, you have a couple of smoke canisters. You might have a nitro or two left, but normally that is uh, quite avoidable on this site. There's plenty of places to go in. If it isn't the uh, front of the white van, you'll just go on the back of the black car or in between the van and the car. Either would do just fine. You need to cover off all three positions with your smokes if you have no clue where they are. Obviously not going back to uh, the top floor is that sort of it worked for us before. They might try and bait some utility operators. They might try and bait some choice and selection as how the approach can come through. Alems is otherwise stuck on the buck though. I think they've read where they need to be. Potentially the back sort of line is going to be something that is maybe more aggressively protected this time from Vitality. I'm hoping to see them respond a little bit more to BDS, try and dig their way across, because Consulate can be a fight that you take across the top floor right till the dying ends. Though, with the danger that BDS might be applying onto the garage wall already, that could be a bit of an early say. I wanted to take out some of the utility grenade will be coming through there. A little bit of damage dealt to Shaku himself, but at least it will get the new gemmers, and that means that the wall will be opened up. Now, there is a uh, evil eye right underneath the white fan that will have to be taken care of, and you saw the pings already coming out, but maybe even more important will be the Banshee that is right around the corner. Doesn't seem like BDS is aware of it yet, and if they will not be, of course, you can just shoot it with a single bullet now, but it is going to be costing you some time, and costing you some moving speed. You never know if that, in the end, is going to be costing you your life and potentially around. And as the Lems opens up on the uh, office again towards Piano, making sure that no player can safely play in that position, he is now going to be finding an opportunity to go for the kill, but he's not going to be able to hit a single shot onto Bibu. Bibu was playing that very late in the water there, was just able to slip away, I think, if that had been... Split second, 
Either way, it could have been a much more dangerous engagement for them. He's able to creep back to a different situation. They've done enough to clear themselves. That pocket of space they made work before, but as I said, I want to see Vitality bite back a little bit before they're able to start trying to pull and peel some bodies. The canister has popped on the bottom of yellow stairs. It buys them some time, expecting a bit of a pace, but BDS weren't really throwing themselves at it just yet. They want to try and do a little bit more around the back corridor, and it's going to start here around Rafal, creeping down the stairs, pre-firing the angle. Can't quite see them. Actually does just dance around the legs of Mozzie, but nothing's connecting. Mirai's able to sneak much closer than he was before, but oh. just caught out on the swing there at the very end as the pressure starts to come around the back of White Van. Rafal kills the Lems. Unfortunate, but Breedy at least gets one back before Bibu gets a bit of revenge for a Lems. Now, though, 30 seconds. What can this three versus three make happen? Shotgun from Shinka will be able to come in huge. 20 seconds left on that clock. It's a two and three situation in favor of Vitality. All they need to make sure now is that the plant won't go down. And with the kill of BB onto Bree Day, it got already dropped. And with Shinka to cover it off in the end, it will be a Vitality round here. A lot better than the previous one. Of course, weren't as keen on holding on the top floor as they were previously. And we also had the Maestro to stay alive a little bit longer to provide that extra support by just zapping away on these ankles of the BDS players as they try to push in. Now we head back up to the top. Now we head to a slightly different rhythm as they, I guess, reassert themselves on that first round that was otherwise very well played for them as we saw, able to remove those big utility players. Will there be a little bit more caution on the approach here? I'm curious what fate befell Lems in the previous round. Um, obviously, he was actually the man that killed Bibu last play day, and now he's the one that's been dropped in a team kill situation. So maybe it's just something BDS is cursed by this split. Maybe they will be. We'll have to find out. We're only in day two of the splits, and as we continue to grow, the curse wider grow, or we're off. For now, we're heading into round number five, the fifth defending round of Vitality. They will go back to the top floor. They decided to run it back in the garage, and it worked out in the end. It paid off. They managed to win the round, and with that, start a new cycle, because every other site was unlocked, and now they have two more rounds to complete it. Decided to go to the top floor first. The, the first site they played, the first site they won as well. They were able to stop BDS in their tracks as they tried to take the control of the yellow stairs. And as BDS failed to do so, it was a Vitality that picked up kill after kill. So BDS now have to make a decision again. Are we going to do the same thing? Are we going to be trying to take control of yellow stairs and the office? Or are we going to... Try and take admin, something that it doesn't look like right now, as literally every single player is located at the uh, console office site. You never know if a ro rotation will be called. Back to the buck and no Flores. I think they sort of expect Vitality to have that Flores game marked. It was something that, you know, when you look at a team that says they think that this operator is exceptionally strong, you expect to see a little bit more. We saw it as a taste here, and they couldn't quite make it work early on. And I think it's just how this map is structured. It makes it a much tougher ask than in Cafe Rise. He's sticking himself solid, and he takes one grenade, but that grenade takes all those ADSs, and he's now put himself in a tricky situation. Even though the doctor is in the bathroom and gets him back up to full fighting health, there is nothing else there that can really protect him at this moment in time, apart from the chance of those stims coming through at the right time. It makes it a very dangerous dance. There's no more grenades left, however. Both used by Shaco to try and take out the player, to try and take out Ryze. And as Bibu uh, was right in time with these teams to make sure he would stay up, it is now him going to be to get a beautiful angle down onto Alems, who didn't really expect him to be on the toilet. And that was the question, can BDS reply? Is there going to be a player near enough to try and take the gunfight up to Bibu to clear out the bathroom? And with that, make Ryze's position a little bit more difficult to take because so far, still the yellow stair stands. It has been the point of contention of BDS in the two rounds we have been here, and so far they have found little to no success. So it's the swing around the back stairs. Shaiko finds himself in the middle of two. There are pings that are coming through, but maybe already slipping past Shinko might be a big part. No. Heads his way back across the opposite side, takes care of that charge, and there it is, the strike around the back stairs. Ranchiro steps up, though, takes care of P4. There's one more body that swings onto them, gets one, gets the down on Shaiko as well. They might not be fully aware, but 
Great rotation comes out around the back stairs. They would have heard that. They're expecting the fight, and Rafal is there to get some cover and get Shaiko back to his feet almost. A monumental play, but it was cut down a little bit too early. But still, look at the time, 30 seconds. They've still got to try and put their pressure up those staircase, which is a very tight firefight. Rise is in a new hole, but he doesn't have to stay there. Rafal takes care of Bibu in the back of the bathroom, though, with a great swing. Rise is shut down by Rafal, who's making up for the misplay in the previous round now, just leaving that Alder on the back oh. line. But Rafal says, yeah, sorry about that team kill in the last round, lads. Here's one in response. For so long, it looked to be going in the way of Vitality in that round. But in the end there, Rafal able to pick up these skills beautifully, beautifully played. And for so long, the Yellow Stairs stood. The Yellow Stairs were in control of Vitality. As soon as Ryan's decided to rotate just a little bit out, it was BDS that just doubled down on it. Just ran up these stairs, got the kill onto B-Boo as he was still sitting on the toilet. And it was, of course, going to be Rise that got caught right after as he tried to go for a bit of a repeak, making sure that the momentum would be stalled. Failed to do so, and instead, BDS able to launch a little bit further. And with that, it is round six now. BDS in the lead, two to three. Pretty decent split so far, decent health. 3-3 isn't too uncommon here. Of course, otherwise, I don't know, actually. I think defense is still favored, statistically speaking, everybody. Um, but some teams, of course, do prefer to start and play on the attack. I think that's, you know, there's been a bit of a change of face. I know it's always the conversation of where do we pull these numbers from and, and where does this sort of build around. And often when we'll highlight it, we'll go by the stats of a map. We'll say it usually ends this way because it usually does. But yes. it's also we're pulling stats from a long period of time. We're pulling stats that are by some ways defined by teams that don't break the mold. And that's always this sort of change of face. And when there are teams that break the mold, we see a game more like this. We see a tighter competitive map where you never really know how things are going to go and the team's preference comes into play so much more. And it's always tougher to gauge that. Quickly trying to find some of the statistics in here. The numbers. Consulate. Numbers, man. What what stage numbers one. Mean? Consulate, 66 rounds, one on the defense. There and we go. 53 on the attack. So it is uh, definitely 66 point I don't know, 55.5%, sorry, I can't count. That's fine. 55.5% defense sided in stage one, that is, but we're in stage two. Now, everything might be different. We have a little bit of a different meta. Flores is coming out, even though it's not being used too much as of yet. Um, but yeah, doesn't mean anything. Just saying that BDS, for now, have a pretty good health. Thank you for the numbers, numbers, man. Uh oh, uh oh. Nice grenades, bye-bye, Rise. He was blown out of there. That was exactly how they wanted this play to happen. All the previous times and rounds they approached it. Finally, they find the end to rise and they do it with a lot of time left. They do it within an opening minute. And for something that has been such a big blow to the approach of BDS, suddenly so quick, suddenly so effective. And you want to see how they build behind it because that's been their A. This is the fourth time we've seen them have that as their approach and their A strategy, regardless yeah. of what the side is. They've made it work for the first time, arguably right now. What do they do next? Yeah, they managed to bring two grenades this time around. They, of course, had the Maverick along and then used a bunch of flashbangs on both Nomad and LMs to make sure that the ADSs would be taken care of. And that allowed him to uh, get the two grenades in at the same time. No way he was going to be able to run away from that one. And now you have that man advantage. Let's see if they can build on that. Shink in the meantime will be going for a bit of a rotate. Realizes that the top floor are not really under contention, especially not admin, so might not be needed there. No, it's instead going to be on connector and potentially even the uh, console office as LMS is now starting to open up into antechamber, trying to lock down the players into the bathroom, making sure that they will not be leaving this room alive. And the response will be to open up the hatch and drop down to potentially go for some vertical plays there where possible. Yeah, the verticality is still a big danger whenever you're sort of approaching, to be fair, any site on Consulate. But here as well, if you get yourself underneath, you have the angles under most of the windows where 
if teams try to go for these quick approaches. And then you've still got this pressure on the Visa stairs to put the pressure above this push here. P4 is the one that they're trying to knock out of that situation and pull them away. And they do it successfully. Lems gets the drop and that frees open that big double door for them to start their approach through the cover from the piano windows. Played perfectly. Cactus is now in that back line. Seeing if he can get one. Sprays to Waterfall. Can't quite lock it off. So goes in on the opposite side. There's a pickup. There's oh, a no. spray. And there's a C4 in amongst the chaos Time. with only three seconds left. They pick it back up, but the pings are consistent. There's a spray over the top. Great buff, cover buff, from Alems. Buff, Can buff. he quite find the angle? He's spraying no, too he high. Look at it. it is. Just that adaptation in the very last second. Oh, man. He just started spraying right above the head and just transferred it down at the very, very, very last second because otherwise that would have been a plant, a post plant. And I'm not saying it's impossible to come back from that, but it would have been so much harder. That brings Vitality into a three-on-three -three position. BDS had the round in their hands and unfortunately lost it due to the C4 and the unchecked player at the bottom of the spiral stairs. And now they're going over to the defense themselves. The statistically, this time I'm gonna gonna expand uh, on stage one based stats, preferred site, better site. Let's see if BDS can make that rain through, make that come through by picking up four rounds this time to make sure that the balance won't be there or will it be vitality that will be taking the win in is it regulation time i believe it's regulation time right the correct terminology for that regulation time regulation time i always say regular time but people are like no it's not regular it's, uh, I, it's almost like this isn't your first language almost like i would <laughs> i would know i don't speak dutch either so it's oh okay i speak two languages like 50 percent there it is. Just yes. the final. Look at that. 0 0.562. I mean, 0 0.562. How many bullets were left? So much of that was to the wire and able to just find that last bit. And it is the big tragedy because, sure, it's not that a post plant isn't doable, but you're in a three versus one at that situation versus what is arguably a one versus one. Just got to try and find that sliver, yeah. that part and you know it's easy for us we're omnipotent we see the outlines but for them to work on information coordination and cause and practice is it's still just that sort of hold your hold your breath and hope moment now see the vitality special admin office oh, yeah. <laughs> first thing they like to take control of p4 is already inside and is uh, being droned in as he moves through swiftly of course, quickly check in whether or not the drones haven't missed anything on the left-hand side. And Shaiko running below, well, that, that makes me a little bit scared for them because, of course, has the opportunity to toss up that Nitro Self. He's all the way below for now, but has the opportunity to move up these stairs. However, for now, I think he's actually going to be playing an archive, thinking that a potential push from the back might be coming in. Of course, the hatches are being opened up by Vitality, so it's definitely not out of, uh, out of the realms of possibilities. That Vitality would just go for a drop out of nowhere. Yeah, it's them opening up their angles. There's the first explosion that doesn't quite take care of Bibu, who's, you know, a big player in this moment in time. You've got to sort of limit those rotations and those movements. You're still looking at trying to find and funnel your way down. And it's BDS sort of dabbling with danger here. They're working out just where the push is going to come from. Probably there. But there's a couple of drones that swing around, put the pressure onto Alems. He knows that his fight here is the next confrontation, but everything is locked off apart from the walking hats right now. Now, Rise is starting to open up. Ranchiro is waiting below with a C4 in hand. Is looking to throw that one up. And you see him aiming at the ceiling as well as P4 gets the first kill. It's the Lems that gets cleaned up. That is the top four. That's the Rome gone. And with that, they can now fully focus onto opening up these hatches. At least you would think so. But it's going to be Shaiko that is waiting at the top of the spiral stairs. Looking to make an impact. Looking to do Shaiko things. Just get a dirty one tap and fall back towards the side. Bring it back to even numbers. As Vitality is opening up the wall right now, they're doing what needs to be done. They're setting themselves up for the perfect execute. But as long as Shaiko is roaming around, he might be he might be coming back to destroy everything they've set up so far. 
P4 hasn't quite had the huge effect he had in the previous game. And oh. there you are, never. Now Renshiro with a great take onto the bottom of Yellow Stairs. Gives them, there's the ping that said, hey, there's a man here, but he's under the own sort of pressure. 15 seconds. Vitality can work in these late second pushes and executes, but as the canister starts to careen its way across the top, it's Cactus oh. that cuts them in half with a double. Got to stick that diffuser too. Breed on the back stairs is cut off there, and now it is just Renshiro spraying his way around the best as he can, but Vitality, I said they can work well in those final 15 second executes, and they demonstrate just how well they can work. Definitely work well here, yes. Able to open up, able to get the control that was necessary, clean the palems quite clearly, and Shaiko, nothing he could do. Beautiful double kill from Cactus as well, taking down, I believe that was Shaiko, and of course the smoke of Rafal right before it would be detrimental to them right before the canister would be starting to chip away on their HP, potentially getting it down right there. And those Fatality are in the lead right now. They got their first out of three rounds. They need to secure their first points and their first out of well, four rounds that they would need to secure the full three in regulation. And as we are heading to Cafe Garage yet again, it will be BDS that are like, all right, boys, we messed us up. We know how to make sure that that won't happen again. So let's edit the strategy. Let's edit the way we play and make sure that it was just a one time thing. That it's just going to be happening in round seven. Not again after that. We take the win and we move on from there. So far, Vitality have set themselves with a really good fight, but they still have a lot of work left to do. And their execute there was very well put together, if a little bit sort of built on the back of Cactus swinging in and getting the doubles again. He can be such a big player. And he was in the previous split when some of the other members weren't quite able to step up to the same level. He was always the sort of big force, especially on the back line of the defenses, to see that translate now to the attacks and to have that drive as well. It's always a good sign, the adaptation and the growth of a team that was sort of brought together not too long before the build-up of all this. It was something that we said about Vitality in the previous split, is they're a team that's growing. They're a team yeah. that didn't go into the first split with the highest expectations, mm -hmm. but now we'll start to see the true shape of them. And we definitely do, and instantly you're starting to doubt even more about the way Empire played last week after they got 7-0 by BDS, and see them having a bit of struggle here on Consulate so far. Or is it is uh, map dependent who performs and who doesn't? It's also forum dependent. Maybe Vitality is just having a way better day than BDS does now, and together with the aggression that they can bring, they're able to surprise them and catch them off guard. Good drone there, however. Got hacked by the Mozzie. Should I go over and not able to pick up the kill? That should have really been a kill for uh, for BDS there. As the drones are being used, he's trying to bring it into safety, trying to get some more information. But I don't think Rise realized as he thought it was probably one of his own. Yeah, it's always that tricky moment, especially because there are active players droning for the team that you expect. It is built around that. They're trying to pull themselves closer. Lems just cut P4 out by swinging on the door. They thought they were holding Shaiko, who's already found his way out and rotated off, and now he's got the cover of a Lems. They tried to do this before when a Lems is under a huge amount of pressure with Shaiko covering the retreat. This time they can actually make it happen with the successful spray before. A minute 30 gone, as well as that Ash, as well as that entry statistic. And Vitality is still trying to find themselves and get comfortable. Cactus, though. He at least cuts Shaiko off on the rotation down the bottom of the yellow stairs, plays around the backside of the vending machine as they start to sort of say, okay, well, we've still set our pressure up, but you look at where Alems has gone. You're assuming that's him inside the bathroom, as it is. He's gone back to the place where, at this point, he'd already long been removed on the previous hold here. Definitely so. One-on-one -on -one in trades for now. One minute left on the clock. Fatality, they need to move. They need to still go down to the all the way to the basement. And the Lems is still around. He's playing around that bathroom. He's playing around the chamber. Has the opportunity to try and rotate around. And as the buck starts opening up, you do see a Lems digging himself in a little bit deeper. Brudet gets the kill down onto Bibu. Tries to go for a bit of support onto a Lems, who now gets picked up. And instantly see that rotation all the way back down. Brudet knows. I cannot stick around here. It's a three on three. I cannot give away the man count that we might have balanced out for now, especially not with 30 seconds. A kill onto Brudet would have potentially ended the round right there. So good call for him that he falls back. 25 
of seconds. They're trying to deal with some of the utility, but they fail to do so as the grenades get caught up by ADSs. Yeah, both caught to remove potentially the claw and the maestro cam on the far side. At least some of it's gone, and that at least gives them an entrance. But as Ranchiro sprays back through, he's going to make sure that it's not comfortable. There's a canister that's in the way. You've got to try and just dig yourself through. We talked about this with Virtus Pro before, and they're going to see if they can make it stick. It's a two versus one, but with three seconds, they're going to try and stick it on the opposite side. Just had to win that first firefight. He's going to drop down, find oh, the feet, okay. and Rafal gets the take there for BDS to keep themselves level. I was going to say, was that a headshot? But no, it was a, it was a feet shot. I just got confused by the kill cam, uh, by, the, by the kill feet. Either way, good shot right there, and, and good for him to not take the gunfight head on. Yeah. I was going to say, like, you know, he could come off the plant any second now, and if you take the gunfight head on, you might lose that one. So he knew exactly where he was. They had the information. Ghost Brown shoots him underneath the white van. That is some good game sense right there. Some good game knowledge. That was utilized to win that round. And with that, we do see the 4-4 four, four right now. We're drawn up again. We're equalized. PDS now deciding to go to console office meeting. And indeed, they played a little bit different than they did before. And it was successful this time around. They just have to hope that mm, the other sides will not be a rerun every single time before they manage to be successful. Because that will become quite stressful if you continue doing so. Top floor this time around. And at the setup, we see the uh, Banshee, of course, being set up to start screaming as soon, uh, as soon as someone repels in. It will slow them down quite a bit. They might not be able to get in cover in time. Gives a little bit of extra time to the players all the way in projector if a rotation will be made. Connector or, of course, the bathroom to take that kill, take that shot to make sure that the plants will not be dug in deep right behind the desk. You also see some of the verticalities being created there. Rafal is using that shotgun to make sure that there is different ways to contest that default plant. And it really shows how certain BDS seems to be of a potential take to come down from the office itself. What we do now, however, is that Vitality is quite a big fan of admin, especially as you saw them talk uh, last week in the interview. They said it as well. We just like admin, P4, just frags. Uh, <laughs> that is basically how we win it every single time. Um, but it doesn't seem like they're going for it this time around because most of the buddies are located around that southwestern side. All right, BDS, you've got to see if you can swing some of this momentum now, obviously, before you were in the front foot, but... Well, how does it batter when you're able to just batter yourself back in against Vitality, who have otherwise stepped themselves into this so far? They've been a little bit more stoic in their defense, but again, I guess it's, you know, it's nice when you can sort of see a team and how they wanted stuff to go, and then how it goes when it goes well versus when it doesn't quite make it. And I think the escape there of Alems was one of them. Catch is being dropped early by Shiko. You can see big pressure coming from a very quick Vitality push here. They threw themselves in, but that diffuser not quite making the rush means that it was a little bit for naught, and they've got to sort of recycle and reposition themselves to try and get it off. There's a spray and a firefight over that opener. Bibu finds himself on a very little amount of health, but Rafal being able to get away with that with barely any damage and those smoke canisters goodbye. Bibu, you assume, if that can just catch? No. The new propagation system means it doesn't quite get that angle. He's going for the oh hop no, out and he do doesn't that? make it. Bibu survives against so many odds due to the new changes. The spray down the back corridor and a situation where Vitality were in a bit of a tough spot and had to re claim the diffuser they've been able to turn it into a totality and almost a fatality as they singularly fight now towards Renshiro. he's battled his way back up the spiral stairs but they're well aware of the positioning the spread of the vitality for you look at how far apart it is there is an entire cacophony it's like Renshiro is on a stage and they are all around you and unfortunately their applause is shooting you in the face that is a round that would be so good to break down just bit by bit on the talus trader scene all the different POVs of all the players as it was quite synchronized well. They knew exactly where the players were. Snapped in from the, uh, three different sides. Of course, lost the diffuser for a little bit, but they managed to get the men count their way. And I'm going to say it again. You didn't have to go for the jump out there as a smoke. Of course, you, you weren't able to get the kill. It's, it's quite unfortunate. The new propagation system didn't really help you there. But jumping out with the shotgun right after, I don't think you were ever going to be winning that gunfight because the, the member that is prone there is just holding that window with his rifle. And he's like, as soon as one pixel moves, I am going to press that trigger and I'm going to kill whoever jumps in front of me. And that's exactly what happened there. And with that, Vitality able to increase their man count. And with that, increase the round score, which is now four, uh, five to four, taking the lead.
two rounds away from a three-pointer against BDS. That is three points that other teams like Empire will not be able to get this stage anymore. And they're still the benchmark. The benchmark of EUL. Even though Na'Vi, of course, ended on top, it is BDS who went to a side. BDS that has been in the top two, top three over the past couple of stages. They are the team to beat. And Fatality, just like they were last stage, are getting very close on beating them right now. All right, still doubling their way down and seeing if the adaptations can be the ones that bring them success. I love the Vitality Execute. They're a team that can change the pace of their Execute. They can sort of communicate that, and it was a very fast and vicious attempt. And obviously, mm. the one piece that fell apart was unfortunately the piece with the Diffuser. But when you go for an early Execute, there is the Once success story, on. that is. And we've seen that exact failure hit Virtus Pro earlier today, where the Diffuser carrier was the one that was dropped on the approach. They had 20 seconds. Oh. They couldn't quite get it. Yet again, Shaiko is able to get the opener here, the C4 out the window. Yet again, they're still sort of kind of collaborating and elaborating their way through. There's not an instant swing of Vitality players as there was the last time there was this opener. But this is what I said about yeah. Vitality. They can adapt and sort of alter their pace. Left the diffuser in front of the window. Now, that is not due to the new mechanic. This is due to the fact that Vitality clearly want to go for an execute from the window. They want to jump in with the diffuser there. So whoever is going to be allowed to be the lucky one chosen to grab that diffuser and repel it in is going to be picking it up as soon as they are going for the repelling. You don't want to lose it in on the roof, for example, uh, if, if the um, fight on the yellow stairs really doesn't go your way because it costs more time than it would to leave it right in front of the window where you want it. It could also be more of a decision of, well, we don't want them to know where the diffuser is because, okay, hopping out that window and getting back up, it's still about 10 seconds and then you've got to try and stick the plant afterwards. But if you know you're doing these early fights and these early executes, you do have that time to play around with. And it means, say, for example, you go for a strike and it doesn't quite work, the diffuser isn't lost in the middle of CEO, which is a tough place to then stick it out. So there's always that option as why they're quite late in this sort of trade situation. So to be fair, I guess it's one of those things that when a lot's happening, you're trying to piece together the storylines, that's one that we might find out when we go back and watch it. But in the meantime, it's the pressure that's going to start coming to a boil here. About to pass the minute mark and there's still all of the BDS players standing, but at least Vitality have been able to take control of Yellow Stairs. One player in the office, however, and Shiro playing behind the bomb chassis, trying to rotate out, being pressured from two different angles at the same time. Rice, however, wants to go into the bathroom, but by the way that it got open, up by the Salmons is going to be exposing him to too many angles and that basically makes it so he cannot really try and contest Team Lucy right here. Nose is behind the desk right now however Shaiko picks up a great kill onto Cactus and Renshiro needs to go down. A grenade will make that happen. Now they need to deal with the player inside of the connector here and as Rice tries to do exactly that it's Shaiko that will refuse to die for now but fortunately though it's going to be Rice that picks up the kill. Three on three. 30 seconds left. The execute must be now. Long arming some smoke canisters towards the back of the site there to see if they can catch that diffuser planter. As we said, it's one of those trades in the balances of you've got to be able to pick yourself back up. Shinka does all he can to offer the cover and the support as Bibu gets that diffuser and gets himself stacked back and dug in against the connector wall there. Pops and pre-fires around the corner. Alems wants to go a little bit deeper, but it's a dangerous dance and it's cut in half and there it is. Vitality are able to put themselves onto map point with another fantastic put together execute against what seems like not the best starting odds. It definitely doesn't seem like it indeed, but their top floor is very strong, the attack at least. Just the coordination of it, able to set up these crossfires, just working for each other as well. Because we saw Rai struggle. We're trying to figure out how he could find an angle on the player and connector. So Shanko stepping it up by clearing some of these players that would be able to hold these long angles that could contest his existence on the bathroom. And with that, it is now BDS on two match points behind. They went from a 7-0 win against Empire to be fighting for two points here today against Vitality. At least they hope to fight for two points because they're not there yet. They're not even at one point yet, whilst Vitality is. Vitality is going to be the only team that has the opportunity to grab the full three and show what they're really made of. And I hate to say it, but Des might be right. A lot of people said that this would be a clear BDS win, but if there was any team, he said, it would be Vitality that would be able to challenge them here today. And the challenge they have definitely put up so far, and, and it's looking like it becomes more than a challenge. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's very fair. It's one of the biggest compliments that we've always sort of paid to Vitality is... I thought to Des. 
that he was right for once. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a compliment <laughs> to Dares that he is right for once. But also towards Vitality, that generally a lot of people play as a team is when they are in these big games against this sort of country folk, they don't shy away. They don't. You know, they they take heed and, and sort of take the lessons learned from all the times that they've otherwise butted heads against them, and they can really put them to task and put them to focus. And it shows you that a team that can have this much sort of preparation and steps behind them, you know, if Vitality had the time that they could dedicate to BDS, and they have to dedicate to BDS to a lot of other teams, you think how far that this roster could go. And definitely so. And if you, uh, if the, oh, that's going to be a quick plan. EP4 already going down. We'll be taken care of. However, from I believe that was a drop down to get it with the bathroom peak, and Shink will only be finding one as a return. That means that Vitality is one man down. However, as you said, two minutes ten on the clock. It's plenty of time to work with here for Vitality to try and bring it back into the favor. And as a result of that, they will decide to drone. They will decide to do what every sane team would do to try and gain information to work with as a diffuser has been dropped in the middle of the site, and well, Rafal just waiting around the corner to try and pick up these kills, try and pick up these angles. Yes, this is it in practice. When I talked about the fact that sometimes if you go for these quick plays with the diffuser in hand, it puts it in dangerous situations. It puts it behind the piano. It puts it in a situation where, okay, if BDS are aware of this, they can entirely reconvene themselves onto it what is feet. a hefty hold, just sees the toes, but... Unfortunately, Cactus isn't taking a dangerous risk right now because he only has a sliver of health. Shaka doesn't have much more, but you never really know that. Shaka now has even less, but he dances around, he flicks, he quick, and he's not able to quite lock it off. Shinka goes for the pickup and the cover. You can see that they're still a bit concerned, but Bibu has been able to swing the body balance into their favor again, yet again. Vitality were off to not the best start, but yet again, they've been able to strike back, restructure, relearn, and reapply themselves towards BD. Yes, who are trying to hold on to a team that is otherwise being very confident on their approaches here. Now, Bibu's currently droning in. You also have one drone left on Shinka, two drones on Bibu, and a Gemini replicator. A minute left on the clock as well. It's plenty of time to work with, but a great <laughs> shot from Rafal. But the Cactus out of servers here. Brings it back to a two and two situation. Flashbangs are looking to be tossed in, and this will be followed up, surely, with a repel in from Bibu, trying to go and go aggressive onto the player, but he's not going to be able to pick up the kill. It's a triple kill for Rafal. Shinka now tries to find the response, but will not be able to find it yet. 35 seconds on that clock. Still plenty of time. Still a drone available available to Shinka, and as he rotates around towards the main door, Rafal should be aware as well. Reloads the SMG quickly and knows that the push will have to come. Swaps over to the shotgun. The actual cam will be giving away the information there, and it will be BDS that picks up yet another round. But it could have gone either way right here. And for now, they bring it back. One last match point for Vitality now, giving them the opportunity to fight for the full three. Otherwise, we're fighting for the two-pointer. It was a great sticking all the way to the end, and you still saw in the pockets of Rafal and uh, Ranchero, I think it was, there was a C4 and three smoke canisters. They still yeah. had all of that sort of end game plant coverage utility if they wanted to opt for it or if they needed to opt for it in that situation. Um, whoever it was alongside Rafal, they obviously still had their verticality holds. They were playing it very, very well. Um, and to sort of be in that, you know, body deficit situation and still go for these jiggle peats with an SMG, which was absolutely filthy and, you know, terrifying. Uh, <laughs> yes. With the confidence of knowing that if they're on the front door and you still have all your smoke canisters, that's the way you want to play this, it sort of shows the approach from BDS, is they're making sure that they can still put that pressure back on Vitality, who have been gunning very well this game. Also props to them to not panic, use all of their utility as soon as that plant went down. Um, because you could have used two of the smoke canisters already in that position when you knew they were planted. You could have used one of your nitros to try and get, sh uh, make sure that you would have that kill. Didn't do any of that. And as a result, had it for the late game. Of course, didn't have to use it there either, as they were just able to find the gunfights in the end. But there was the opportunity. Either way, six five. It's also the split I'll on look that, at this I guess. again. Yeah, that was just filth. We peek. Just hey, waiting. Man. Surely not shooting. Oh, the beautiful Killer. headshot. Rafal has really stepped up uh, this game, I think. And he stepped up in the last game as well. I think for a player that's sometimes a little bit quiet on a roster of very mm -hmm. loud players, he sometimes get a little bit overlooked, overlooked in that flank watch situation. Nice rise. Um, but this game especially, I guess, you know, if there's a map where you need your flank watch to be on point, it's often this map. Yes. Uh, and your smoke player needs to be often on point on this map as well. Consulate is Rafal's most uh, like strenuous test. 
Nice uh, snap of the Nitro there from Rise as Shaiko be, uh, is being put under pressure just a little bit. Has to fall back out of admin office and it is clearly the uh, plan of approach here for Vitality as a lot of uh, manpower is being assigned towards taking control, seizing control of admin. Shaka's trying to challenge it how much, uh, how much ever he can. He uh, will lose control of it nonetheless. And now Vitality will be taking control. They will be pushing through. They already have copy. They're making the rotations right now before taking a bit of damage, however, as he's up on a repel here. But nothing too fatal yet. And with that, BDS and Vitality both will stay on five members each. Okay, this admin approach is something that they've talked about being big fans of before. Kex is going to open himself up this angle over the top of these stairs and look towards the heart of the site as P4 offers the cover from the opposite side. There's not been too much of a run-out presence from BDS so far, but you can never not write that off. Why do they need to when they just do things like that? A great take by Shaiko, who has been so solid on getting that entry figure into his hands, especially on the defense. And I think it says credit to Vitality for still being able to find success in and amongst how consistent Shaiko has been able to win those opening engagements. And yeah, definitely has been indeed. And Shinko used all his drones already. Will be on the Gemini Replicator trying to get some information, know exactly where a file is right now. However, still a dangerous angle to peek. Canisters are being tossed out to try and deny the peek from coming through. The Barrack, uh, the Ash Charge will not be reaching the table, which makes Actually, Shaka with a double kill there. It's before taking care of from that window. That's going to be very big. It allows Rafal to move up with that shotgun play close to the door. As Cactus is nearing it little bit by little bit, that shotgun will be coming in huge for sure. Well, now Shinka, who I'm going to talk about Shaka getting the open. And Shinka's been fantastic at getting the response a little bit later on in the round. And it's been, for some of the rounds in Vitality's favor, the one that starts to drive it their way. The bottom of Spiral goes the way of Bibu. But with canisters still being popped and one still in the pocket, no longer, I think, at this situation. No, there's still one there on the board. 15 seconds, and Cactus is going for the close firefight. The shotgun stacked itself up, cuts the diffuser in half, the reposition down the backside of the stairs. And this is us heading into an OT at this moment in time. BDS aren't going to hand this one away, but they don't really have to. Bride swings on the backside of the top of the stairs, pushes us into OT, and you can see that BDS, I mean, they're obviously, they're always working hard. Not taking the full three points is a blow to any team. I think yeah. they often suffer it more than a lot of other teams because very high expectations. That's it, right? Everybody expects them to do well, and whenever they don't really have the full three-pointer or the the dominance that we've seen from them before. People are instantly like, oh my god, is this the end of BDS, you know? Like everybody's suddenly starting to uh, conspire against them. Of course, not the case by far. BDS able to bring it back here after a 6-4 deficit. Now looking to take control themselves. They're on the defense. Just came off of that one, had a couple of success uh, rounds in a row too. To be exact. And with that, and try and make it a full three. However, the nice thing about overtime is is that your side rotation gets reset. So even though they just won this site, they're allowed to go there again. And Vitality didn't really have an answer to what BDS brought. Of course, also came due to Shaiko getting two insanely good kills. Down onto, of course, the pressure from the long desk and the pressure on the double window and balcony. It allowed the smoke to play close, which then resulted into the kill, then onto your thermite, and then you're only left with two people standing. Doesn't really help you. So Vitality need to make sure that that doesn't happen, and there's multiple different ways to do that. Uh, one, for example, would be to take care of the desk. You can do that with an ash charge from below, or to get a grenade right over the reinforcement that Rafal is putting up now. However, the reinforcement is being put up in a way where it gets quite difficult to get a grenade over. There is a higher possibility of it bouncing backwards towards the long desk. Uh, so it will probably result, I would dare to say, in P4 using one of the S charges down from below. But if you're talking about that, you see a lot of BDS personnel actually roaming. One in the garage, you see one on circle desk or antechamber slash bathroom. And that means that they're surely not going to be giving that one away for free. All right, BDS, it's been three and three either side and either half. You've got to see if you can lock down some of this momentum on sites that have otherwise been back and forth across both teams. Nobody's really been able to give the other one any more than a stretch of two rounds that have otherwise been threaded together in the pockets of Vitality most recently. Mm. So it's seeing if they can just find that little spark, that little bit of a difference maker. Otherwise, if it is par for the course, 
at this expectation. Whoever gets this opener is really setting themselves up for that battle of success in a long run situation more than anything. And just how bitterly back and forth this game has been so far. But all it takes is one pop-off moment, one sliver of hope that might come through, maybe an entrance for Vitality that doesn't go Shiko's oh. way, or maybe in response, taking care of Shinka as the opener instead. Beautiful angle being displayed there by Shinka, the man who has been doing work for Vitality. And they're looking very keen on taking control of the yellow stairs. Rise is repelled up on the side. There's air jets being in place. Claimers outside on benches to make sure that a run out will not be resulting in more than a single kill if they're even lucky to get one. Cactus, of course, holding that as well. And as a drone will be spotting out Renshiro around the piano side, it will surely be Vitality that now takes control. But thinking about it, do we go for the piano hold or are we just going to be setting ourselves up to overrun the site? And as Lem is getting quite close to the yellow stairs, he might actually be deciding to go for a bit of a peek here. He's toying with the idea and you expect that there'll be some sort of control and it's P4. As we said, hasn't been able to dig into this fight the same way that he's been able to, especially previously, but with Shaiko instantly getting the body back, takes care of Rise, the Buck's in a tricky situation, the C4 shot out before it can make the impact that it wanted to. Shaiko's able to drift the other way, but there's the Cactus corner. with the control, and as he said, the drone giving that intel. In a drone in the top of yellow, they knew exactly would be in that corner, so it's an easy kill for them at that moment in time. And as B4 now opens up into the connector, it will be the smoke to fall back and Bree Day to take a bit more of a forward position. Has this shield to play with a pixel angle as well. Bebo taking a lot of damage, trying to repel in. Might actually die on his way in. No way that that just happened. 10 seconds, you could have waited just a little bit there, but of course there is multiple smoke and says that could pop. So now we see the ace just running in. Cactus grabbing that diffuser, but forgets that he actually needs to press the button. And now we'll have to do it in the middle of the site here and there's just limited cover misses the shot on this line maestro there one passes through two pass through and bds win the round somehow forgot that he had to press the button to pick up the diffuser left him in a very very annoying spot to plant in the banshee in the middle of the room didn't help them either and bds now find themselves in an overtime match point going over to the attack and Vitality surely will not be happy with the outcome of that round. So far, it has been a 50-50. Let's see if BDS can continue it that way. I think I understand the decisions that, you know, and I'm always going to paint this as a picture of why BDS yeah. died digging in, is because you can see at first he hesitated. And he hesitated because of the smoke canister. But then I'm assuming he got a call saying, look, we've only got about 10 seconds left, and they've got more canisters. Yeah, you, you need have to, to go. Dig in. Because if he dies outside and takes more damage outside, the diffuser's outside as well. And they have no option <laughs> other than option, like plan B, which is gun in and try and push. And they haven't done enough to remove the bodies from the back line position. Exactly. Gone. So dying in sight of that situation- Was the best possible thing you could have done. Was the best possible thing because of the hesitation. That I understand. The not picking up the diffuser, I understand it. It's tragic. This change is still very new. If you're unaware, at this point, you uh, have to interact to pick up the diffuser now. It's just a button press, but just a button press when you're in a stress situation that you have been playing this game for however many years. Yeah. Every single day, you f forget those moments. And unfortunately, that's at least the second one that I know you and I have seen firsthand of just... You go on autopilot, you just forget yeah, yeah, about it. You, you want to reach that wall. The, the wall right there, you see in the middle of the triple, that has been reinforced. That was the goal. That's where yeah. he wanted to go under that light to try and plant. So you ran over. I was like, well, forgot the diffuser. Need mm -hmm. to go back. Picks it up, runs into the banshee and is like, all right, there's, there's one second on the clock. I need to press now. There's nothing else I can do. There's no way they will be giving me the kills. And at that moment in time, you saw a bit of panic in the cover as well. That wasn't quite necessary because he was relatively safe uh, for the cover to be a little bit imperfect. But nonetheless, it is BDS that pick up the round. Well played by them, able to stall out enough time. Perfect smoke canisters tossed as well by dealing damage outside. And as soon as you're in that uh, animation of repelling in, there's nothing you could have done anymore. Just hoping that the diffuser will be inside rather than outside. Now, the hold up here is something that we've talked about and highlighted a lot before. Rise, I think, was only uprooted successfully once in terms of the plan A of BDS to burn through those ADSs. And they sort of restructured themselves a couple of times. They brought another pair of grenades towards the final end with the Maverick in the succession here. They've still only got two, as they did earlier on. I guess I'm curious to see if they try and dedicate as much time towards the top. They seem to be setting themselves up for it for now. Or 
if they otherwise go for a slightly different approach, if they go for a bit of pressure elsewhere first. It's drones that are offering some cover. It's Echo uh, that is a first pick here and that is offering use a Selma. some of that pressure. Oh, I was going to say they're going to have to use a Selma to try and get rid of it, but a grenade will take care of the ADSs. Rice will still be allowed to be uh, moving back up to the top of yellow if he would like to. Doesn't seem to be the case. Wants to challenge the window. Grabs the hand of Shaiko as well. And that is going to be a huge pick here for Vitality to try and live on, to try and make sure that this round will be theirs. And now he's in, well, literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. And a third thing that I don't know what to call because there's one man on the skylight, there's one man on the yellow window, and there's one man on the bathroom window. He can literally not move from here. Rise getting that kill, spraying his way back around, and then finding one more. Steadily removing them, you took out the second frag grenade by accident and you have the cover there. You're then able to get a bit of revenge and yet again, they've picked themselves back up in this situation. A bit of a trade in the hands of the diffuser as BDS restructured themselves for a second approach. Double repel in must be the thing. Rafal goes in, Bride should be as well. Rise manages to pick up the first one, gets taken out by Bride right after, was stunned by the Yokai drone, but it wasn't enough to stop Bride from getting the kill. And as he is now waiting patiently, just afraid that he might get peaked, it's a 30 second situation in a Two and four here for BDS. Rinchiro grabs that diffuser. They try and get that Yokai drop, but fail to do so. Really struggling here, and that will slow him down for just a couple of seconds more. 20 seconds. Are they going to be able to get that plan down? I mean, one more Echo drone still on the table in the middle of the room. It's trying to find itself solid. There's some walls opening. They're actually going to use it as a bit of early aggression here on the split. They pop it and are able to pull it back in time too. Steadily and stunned. Try and scream their way across, but it's an easy cleanup for Vitality, and still teetering ourselves on the end of a stressful game. There's one more round left, but there is only one more round left. And one of these two teams is the only one that can take the better two points. Yeah. And it's tricky because both of them have been able to keep finding responses for each other. That's it. Both of them have been able to find a response to whatever was being brought. You saw BDS run it back a couple of times, which brought them success. We saw Vitality finding success in the first tries, but after that uh, fell short a little bit of some of BDS's approaches. As we're heading to Cafeteria Garage, it will be that bottom floor. Vitality will have to attack. Now, the Noma gets swapped out for Twitch, which is logical. The Mute also gets swapped out for a Maestro. Now, this is pretty big because that means that the, the Twitch runner is just going to be allowed to go through the drone hole. means that someone needs to be watching it. Otherwise, the Electric Law will be taken care of or, dealt, more importantly, the Evil Eyes will be secured and will be neutralized. That is what they need to get rid of. They need to make sure that those Twitch drones will not be pushing through and as the ADSs and Evil Eyes are being set up, Bibu knows his job. Knowing your job and actually making it work are two unfortunately different things. And I guess it's see if you can have that structure, that sort of mentality to carry yourself across the end of what has been a very long and arduous drive towards the top here. But... Is just that difference, that precious break of the points and seeing if they can change something to crawl themselves across to victory. It has been so bitter back and forth and some rounds have really just been taken and some rounds have, well, unfortunately been let slip away. It's the story of how this ends though. That's the most important part. A final approach towards a big, heavy electrified wall as they try and clear their way in through the Twitch the first time and let's see if they can find it. That claw goes the drone follows suit. That's okay though, that gives him the opportunity to open up the wall. The question is, is there another claw? Yeah, it had been deployed on the left-hand side already and that means a bit of an opening is uh, here for Vitality to work with. Now, second drone comes in, tries to find the second electric claw. We'll find that as well. Goes for the evil eye. Oh, and it opens up to try and counter the Twitch drone. But Bibu was quicker on the trigger right there, able to make sure that the evil eye would not last long. And with that, good pieces of utility are being taken care of. Just tries to find as much as he possibly can. Tries and take care of one of the EDSs. Knows exactly where the mozzie is. Pings the head, giving the opportunity to go for a pre-fire. They have it. A pre-fire comes in, but they missed the opportunity. They missed the shot. And Shaka will live for now, but P4 is already in. P4 just dug his way into pipes. When Shiro stops it before he gets much deeper, but suffers. In the meantime, they're going to stick it with Shinker on the close cover, and suddenly it's all blue. Just Breede left. He's trying to find something over the top of the boxes. Digs the man between uh -huh. the cars, but it's Vitality and look at Bibu <laughs> in the top left. That's the energy after a max OT game against your country folk, against 
the team that is often cited as being the strongest in the region. That is the hype and the energy you need, and that is a victory that was bitterly fought for, but exceptionally deserved. Of course, they didn't get the full three points that they wanted, but you can see in the face of Vitality how much it means to them that they pick up the win here. Even though if it just is two points, they are still two points that will matter in the end. And with that, Vitality will be beating BDS, the team that 